Not counting the Dragon Mount cold open, the Wheel of Time, Episode 7, began in the ways. Parent Golden Eyes has very powerful senses, so he was able to spot the first Guiding Stone before anyone else. Unfortunately, they were not alone. Pot and Fane was following them, and Trollocs had mangled the Guiding Stone, which explains how the Trollocs got to the two rivers undetected. The Dark One has made use of the ways. The group had intended on traveling to the Eye of the World, but Rand instinctually used the One Power to save Egwene from an attacking Trolloc, so Machin Shin was able to locate them. They were forced to exit the ways at Faldara, but not before Machin Shin entered their minds and attacked their biggest fears, regrets, and guilts. Nonetheless, Nynaeve got mad, and when she gets mad, she can channel the One Power, which bought time for Moraine to open the way gate. Algomar welcomed them into Faldara, but I use that term loosely. Show Algomar either does not like Aes Sedai, or he is intimidated by his sister Amalisa. Amalisa trained at Tar Valan. She is not Aes Sedai, since she is too weak in the One Power, but she and Moraine got along better than Moraine and her brother. So Moraine told Amalisa to send word to the Red Aja about Matrim Cawthon. Perrin saw Pod and Fane in Faldara, but Nynaeve didn't believe him, so Pod and Fane is still lurking. And it's worth noting that Pod and Fane casually left the ways with a little bounce to his step, which begs the question, how did Pod and Fane get past Machin Shin? Nynaeve learned that Lan is a king, or rather, Lan was the son of the King of Malkier, a kingdom that has now been overrun by the Blight. Lan was carried off as a child, and his parents were killed, so part of Lan's backstory parallels that of Nynaeve, since her parents were also killed while she was just a child. We also finally got to meet Min, one of the coolest characters in the story. Min has a talent, which allows her to see auras and visions around people that speak to their future in the pattern. But during a time when so many people die, is that a gift? Or a curse. Mint saw a parent with yellow eyes and blood running down his chin. She saw Rand rocking a baby, and around the girls, Mint saw a white flame and a ring of gold. Mint also told Moraine that they are all linked, all four of them, and that is not usual. Mint saw sparks of light trying to fill the shadows, and shadows trying to swallow the sparks, and they were all very clear visions, which suggested to Mint that these four people are important to the pattern. Last but not least, Mint told Moraine that she saw the Amberlin seat in full regalia and that Amberlin would be her downfall. Afterwards, Moraine told the kids that she still didn't know who the Dragon Reborn was, and whoever wasn't the Dragon Reborn would die at the Eye of the World. So Nynaeve pushed back, saying that as powerful as Moraine is, she can't drag them there against their will. Moraine told them to make their decision by the morning, and she left. Nynaeve and Ren were the most vocally skeptical. But Egwene countered that she wanted to go to the Eye of the World because if there was even a chance that Moraine was right, then it would be worth it. She then called out Nynaeve, saying that the only reason that Nynaeve was pushing back was because Nynaeve was not fond of Moraine. Rand then chimed in that they'd already lost too many people and he couldn't lose anyone else in the room. Notice the wording. Rand said that he could not lose anyone else in the room. Possibly a subtle clue that Rand already suspected that he was the Dragon Reborn. Perrin then threw out the idea that it might be Matt, which Egwene blew off, and that triggered Rand. Rand suggested that Egwene never truly understood or cared for Matt, which is just silly, but at the same time, a part of him was probably still hoping that Matt was the dragon and not him. But then Perrin came to Egwene's defense and told Rand not to speak to her like that. And Nynaeve jumped in by saying that she was tired of them fighting over Egwene like she was something they could win. Nynaeve's suggestion caused Rand to accuse Perrin of proposing to his wife the same day that Rand and Egwene first got together. A bold accusation, especially against a man who was mourning the loss of his wife at his own hands. Perrin was very, very close to entering beast mode, but he controlled himself, and Rand walked off. Rand tried to vent by shooting the bow, but he kept missing the bullseye. But then Egwene came outside and they talked it out. Rand encouraged Egwene to go to the White Tower no matter what happened at the Eye of the World. And she said that she wouldn't go without him. So he agreed that he would go to and become her warder. Then they kissed, went inside, and did the forbidden dance. Afterwards, Rand got out of bed and headed to the training yard with a new focus. And this time, he found the flame in the void, hitting the bullseye three times in a row. As he did so, Rand remembered carrying his father Tam back to the two rivers. Tam was wounded and poisoned by the taint of the Trolloc Blade, so Tam spoke to Rand as if Rand was his mother Carrie. 
Tim apologized to Carrie, saying that he hadn't meant to find the Aiel woman there, and he hadn't meant to take home a baby boy. But the boy was crying. In other words, Tam alluded to the fact that Tam was not Rand's biological father. At the time, Rand did not know what this meant. But then, Rand busted through the Ironwood door using the one power. When he got to Tarvalon, he had the feeling that he'd seen Dragon Mount before. Rand accidentally used the one power to save Egwene from the Trolloc inside the waves. And Ma Chin Shin told Rand that he was the Dragon Reborn. And he could not escape his fate. So Rand found Min to ask if it was true if he really was the dragon reborn. Min told Rand that the first vision she ever had was of a man in armor carrying Rand's heron-marked blade. And when she looked at him, she saw snow and blood. She saw a baby born on the slopes of Dragon Mount. Min saw that the man raised him in a wooden house besides fields of sheep in a sleepy village surrounded by two rivers. And that baby was something impossible. When she looks at Rand now, Min sees rainbows and carnivals, and three beautiful women. And she also saw the eye of the world. With that, Rand told Moraine that he was the one, and they snuck off together to find the eye of the world. Meanwhile, Land was off with Nynaeve, and Moraine had masked their bond. So basically, Rand and Moraine snuck off to save the world without losing anyone else. Moraine does not expect to live, and presumably, Moraine is hoping that should she die, Land will be strong enough to hang on as Nynaeve learns how to bond him which may have been symbolized by Moraine passing Nynaeve her torch. Moraine and Rand are awesome, but so are the rest of them. Egwene told Nynaeve that she has decided to go, and Perrin decided the same. There is no way Nynaeve will let them go without her, and there is no way that Lan isn't going to chase after Moraine. So basically, they are all awesome too. The big question is, what was Loyal up to, and will we see him in the finale? Either way, it is going to be intense.